Hey, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be reviewing and looking through TeamViewer remote access software. This is something new I'm doing. I'm just going to go through some software here and kind of give my opinion on it and kind of walk you through it. Uh, more intended for beginners and uh, kind of a first look at the software before you use it so you kind of know what you're getting yourself into. Um, I tend to use this software a lot to allow people to get in my computer as well as to get into theirs. It's very simple to use and you can have people install it within a matter of minutes. Uh, and then once you got it installed, this is what comes up. It's very similar on both Windows and Mac. Uh, what you'll see here is uh, allow remote control. It will automatically generate a ID for you, which you can go ahead and give to the person that you want to get into your computer. And then also generate a random password, or you can go ahead and put a password in uh, yourself. That way it's not randomly generated. Uh, as you can see below here, it says not ready, please check your connection. That's because I have Wi-Fi currently turned off. And that's what you would get if you didn't have an internet connection. So what else we have here is the unintended access. Uh, this just allows uh, this checkbox allows you to go ahead and start TeamViewer when your computer boots up. So let's say you have a computer that automatically boots up after a power down or uh, loses power, then TeamViewer would go ahead and come up on its own and you can even set up a ID and a password that's always the same. That way you can log right back in once it comes back up. Grant easy access. This you can check and uh, log in uh, you might need a license to use this, but uh, it allows just very easy access to your computer via TeamViewer. And then on the right-hand side, what we have is if you want to control someone else's computer, instead of give access to yours, you can go ahead and ask for uh, the partner ID, and you can choose remote control and connect. And once you've started connecting, it will ask you for their password, and if you have their password, it will go ahead and let you in. The only way you can have access to someone's computer is if they have TeamViewer running and they gave you their ID and their password. So it's completely safe. If you got it turned off, no one can get in. Um, you also have the option to just do file transfers. Let's say you don't want to control someone's computer. You don't want remote access to it. You just want to simply transfer, transfer some files in between. Uh, you can just go ahead and use this instead. Uh, up here in the right corner, I don't really know why they have this. It's kind of redundant. Uh, you can also insert your partner's ID up in here and then hit connect. Um, sign in, that allows you to sign in if you have a licensed account. Uh, a licensed account is very nice because you can only use this uh, non-commercially, meaning you can't be making money and using it. So I, I personally do have an account and uh, it's licensed, so uh, I do enjoy using TeamViewer a lot. Uh, I've found it. It's one of the most easiest remote access softwares out there to use. Um, again, your partner can install it very quickly. And as long as you have the same version of TeamViewer, it's fairly easy to connect to. It's fairly easy to go ahead and exchange remote control information and control uh, their computer. Also, while you're controlling their computer, they always have the option of moving the mouse as well and they have complete access to their own computer while you're in it. They also see what you're doing which is another really nice uh, thing to have. Uh, meeting, uh, this I haven't used but uh, you can host the meeting, uh, presentation, a video, phone conference. Um, you can again create a meeting and give people the meeting ID, put your name in, join the meeting, schedule meetings, um, We'll move on to computer and contacts. If you have a, an account, you can go ahead and sync up contacts and different computers that you have for TeamViewer to use. And then finally, the chat. You can chat amongst people, um, partners, whatever. Um, sign in just lets you sign in to your licensed account. Uh, about TeamViewer, that just gives you information of the current version that you have. Preferences allows you to set up different things in TeamViewer, the sound quality, uh, if you want to use a microphone, video quality, all that fun stuff. Uh, 
quit team viewer if you want to exit out. Edit allows you to copy paste, select stuff. You can use emojis and symbols from down here. Uh, you can invite a partner to use it, send them out an email. Extras, nothing really special here. Um, then you can go ahead and what you'd expect out of the window bar, go into full screen, close it down, zoom in, minimize. And help just gives you access to help topics. You can either search for them or just browse through them. Um, overall, I give this software a 9 out of 10 because of the ease of use, the modern layout, and how easy it is to install and just get it going right off the bat. There's not a lot of explanation to give to your partner. They kind of see the minimal layout and only the necessary things to get you connected they just give you an ID and a password and boom you're in and now you can access the computer without having a bunch of questions I hope you enjoyed this review and quick walkthrough of TeamViewer I'll try doing more of these software reviews as I get the time I hope you enjoyed it and if you have some kind of software you'd like me to review uh, please go ahead and post down in the comment section also, if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and comment. I enjoy making these, so I hope you enjoy watching them. I'll catch you on my next video, and thank you for watching.